uh, 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 excuse me, you are going to talk about uh, uh, Jurassic World uh, Dominion on your uh, live show. Yes, I am. And thank you guys so much for joining me once again for a brand new Flick Live, where we talk about movies and everything else that I care to talk about. Uh, but the first main topic I want to dive into is we finally got a brand new trailer for Jurassic World Dominion. Now, first, I need to say this. I would include trailer footage and do an actual reaction to this trailer if only Universal understood copyright and fair use laws when it comes to YouTube and their policy. Because what they do is they say, you know what? I don't care if the government said, you know what? Fair use criticism and review is covered under fair use and you're allowed to actually show images and footage for movies as long as you actually give your original opinion on it. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't know what that is. So just get rid of that. Flush it down the toilet because we're just going to do a copyright strike for everything you do or any video or any review you put up of our stuff. And that's what they've been doing to me. And I know they've been doing that to many other people for the last five years. Every movie I've ever reviewed that was from Universal, Fast and Furious, movies like Split, even the, the, the last Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom trailer I remember talking about on YouTube. They gave me a copyright strike. So, unfortunately, I don't have any fun visuals to share with you other than you guys can look at this and pretend this is the only visual I have. But with all that said, let's just dive into the trailer. So here are my quick initial thoughts on Jurassic World Dominion, the trailer. I first will say this. The trailer to this looks better than the entire movie of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Because that entire movie, or at least the last half of it, took place in a rich guy's basement. That was the plot to a Jurassic Park movie. Let's never forget that. But then going into this film, carrying over the, some of those plot points, at the very end of that movie, and spoilers, but who really cares, a little clone girl, that's right, I said a little clone girl, pushed a big button, releasing the dinosaurs from the rich guy's basement out into society. And everyone just looked at her as she did it. <laughs> Good job, Owen. Good job, Claire. Thanks for ruining humanity. Uh, and now we have Jurassic World Dominion, where the dinosaurs are finally on the loose and they're living beside us. Not in perfect harmony, by any means. They're probably eating small children, disrupting the way of life. Like, how do you go to a park knowing there's velociraptors and T-Rexes on the loose? You can't. You have to live in your basement for the rest of your life. Think about that. Really think about that. The, the society and the way the world is going to be functioning in this new movie. But then you see characters like Owen. He's just at his log cabin riding his motorcycle. But I did like that Blue is still around him. Like there's still like a weird companionship and a bond between them. A man and his dinosaur. You can never separate such things. There was also a really cool shot in this trailer where the Mosasaurus jumped out of the, the ocean and there was like a crab fishing boat. I, I thought that was a really cool visual. Uh, but overall, I'm just glad that we're finally getting something different when it comes to the Jurassic Park, or should I say Jurassic World franchise. It, it's like, finally, we have left the park. We have left an old man's mansion, or at least his basement. And now we can go out into society and the scope of the movie feels so much bigger and more epic. And if this is the finale to the Jurassic World trilogy of films... I think it's at least an interesting concept. And I will say the trailer does get me excited because it just looks like a good time with dinosaurs. And uh, I, from the trailer, it looks like they are utilizing like different settings and locations and different dinosaurs. So I'm really just hoping for a fun time. I mean, it, if for nothing else, it can't be any worse than Fallen Kingdom. Like it can't be, right? I don't think it will be. Uh, so those are my quick thoughts. And here's what I want from you guys. You guys can comment anything you guys want to. Let me know what you guys thought about the trailer. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you looking forward to the movie? I just overall think it looks better than the previous two Jurassic World movies, which I was not a big fan of. But when it comes to the original movies, love them. The first Jurassic Park film is one of my favorites of all time. And that's why I think I love jo Jeff Goldblum more than I probably should. And that's why I have this hoodie. But speaking of that original cast... I think my the thing that gets me most most excited about this new new the thing that gets me most excited about this new movie is they're coming back. I love the original cast members from the first film. You have Jeff Goldblum, you have Sam Neill, you have Laura Dern, and the the great thing is when you bring back those original cast members, not only does it bring more heart into the Jurassic World franchise, but hopefully it brings more charisma because I'm not a big fan of the characters of Owen and Claire. I just, I really could care less if they were eaten alive at the end of the first act in this new movie. Like, it would not matter to me. And if anything, that would be a great idea because then it would give more screen time 
to the original cast and characters, which I would prefer. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but I stand by it. So either way, guys, chime in. Let me know what you guys think about it. Uh, and by the way, speaking of uh, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, I would rather see her directing more Star Wars-esque things than starring in more Jurassic World movies. By the way, if you haven't seen uh, Book of Boba Fett Episode 5, definitely check it out. Highly recommend it. She did a really good job. All right, guys, let's just dive into it. Uh, the Jurassic Park, 10 out of 10. Uh, Jurassic Park 2, a 7 out of 10. Fair enough. Uh, hey, John, are you excited for Jurassic World Dominion? Well, Jalen, I just talked about it for the last five minutes. Overall, I am looking forward to it. It looks like a fun summer movie. Uh, Fallen Kingdom has a good script. No, Fallen Kingdom has a terrible script. Everything about that film is terrible. The script is not good, and let me explain why. Whenever you dedicate half of your movie to taking place in a basement with dinosaurs, that's a terrible concept. But diving further into that, when the major subplot in the third act of the film is auctioning off your dinosaurs in the, in the rich guy's basement, no one wants to see that. We don't want to see dinosaurs being auctioned off. I, I didn't go to this movie to watch that. Now, if that was like five minutes and that was some subplot of a subplot that was just tacked into the movie, I, I get it. But their plan was to auction off dinosaurs. <laughs> like, what? Just put them in a zoo. People will go see them. We don't need to auction them off for profits. I don't know about you, but if I knew there was an actual T-Rex in like a zoo somewhere, I would pay hundreds of dollars to go see such a thing. So I, I, I just, their business strategy didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I, I would disagree with the, the script being good, unless the script for the movie was completely entirely different than what the actual movie was. Then maybe it was good, but even so, I don't think it would be. All right, I'm going to dive into your guys' questions here, and you guys are already killing it with Super Chats and the Streamlabs donations, uh, and I thank you for that. Thank you so much, guys. Um, Gosh, uh, where do I even start with this? We have one from Max Nugenbauer. I'm excited for Jurassic World Dominion. I'm a defender for for Fallen Kingdom. That movie is awesome and underrated. Though I know you disagree. I do disagree. Hey, if you can enjoy the movie, I get it. At least the first act, they're, they're at Jurassic Park. There's that really beautiful shot of the... Um, I forget the scientific terminology and the name for it, but the long neck dinosaur, and you see the last image of it on its back legs as the fog comes in and you, the volcano is erupting. I get it. Like, there's little moments in that movie that are like, okay, that's I can appreciate that. But it's everything after the first act of that movie, it just goes downhill. And what I mean by downhill is, as, as a wise man once said, that's a big pile of shit. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, by the way, I hope you guys are enjoying the, uh, the gif emojis for the super chat tonight. Everything's Jurassic Park themed in this video. Uh, and don't worry, we are going to dive into every random movie topic you guys want to talk about in just a few seconds, but I just want to talk a little bit more about Jurassic World. Uh, the next one comes from Skylar Wheelock. John, you always say Buffalo Bill and Leatherface are some of the scariest villains, but what about John Doe from Seven? There really could be a guy out there with a woman's head in a box. Oh, there probably is. I probably have a woman's head in a box in my closet. Who knows? I couldn't tell you what I did last Saturday night. I just black out. But yeah, I, I agree. The character of John Doe is terrifying. But you know what's even more terrifying than the character of John Doe? It's the actor who plays John Doe. Have you guys looked up what Kevin Spacey's done in the last like five years? Scary stuff. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, T600 Tiny Todd says, Joker 2, why John, why? I'll tell you why. Money. M money. They love it. They want it. They don't care how they get it. Just give it to us. Uh, yeah. Uh, so when it comes to the first Joker film, first of all, I love that movie. I really love the way it looks. Even though it was shot on digital, watching it again on 4K just like a few weeks ago, I've seen it a handful of times. Just something, the way it looked, though, they actually made the digital look like film, which I really appreciate and wish more digital films did because everything nowadays just looks so sterile, flat, and crisp. Uh, that's kind of one minor complaint I have with the Jurassic World Dominion trailer. It just looks so crisp, like just a little too crisp. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a weirdo who likes film grain. Uh, but either way, I'm looking forward to Joker 2. Hopefully the script is good. Uh 
there's a lot they can do with it. I'm hoping that they throw something different at us uh, because, like, maybe uh, Joker escapes from the insane asylum. Maybe we go on another tirade of, you know, tear. Who knows? Uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's in good hands. And I think if Joaquin agreed to come back to do it, I think the script at least has to be somewhat decent. Skylar Wheelock says... What do you want from the Mortal Kombat sequel? Cole needs to die in the first few minutes. I agree. The first opening scene to the new, new Mortal Kombat movie needs to fix all of its mistakes that the previous movie made, which I was not a huge fan of. I wanted to love it. I tried to love it. I still stand by Mortal Kombat 1995 being the best, best video game movie ever made, and I will stand by that until the day someone does performs a fatality on me by freezing me to death and decapitating me. But yes, I agree with you. Cole needs to die in the first fight scene in the movie. Just get rid of that character. We don't give a shit. Useless. No one wants it. Uh, and uh, what was the other part of this question? Hey, he was the worst part of the first film. Uh, noob Cybot or Smoke, a lot more Scorpion, better dialogue, longer fight scenes, and a lot more gore with fewer camera cuts. I agree. They need to do something like they did with the Raid Redemption films where you have extended fight scenes. Why not utilize things? You have talented actors. You have talented directors. Hire them to make your awesome Mortal Kombat movie. I mean, imagine how good of a Mortal Kombat movie you could make. I mean, it could be the best, like, fight sequences you've ever seen on film. They just, some for some reason, they refuse to do it. I don't understand it. Um, what was the other part here? You, some, you said something else I wanted to dive into. Oh, and by the way, one thing they could do with a new Mortal Kombat movie is have a tournament. You know, the premise to every game that's ever existed where you have a tournament of fighters to see who's the champion. The thing that they didn't do in this Mortal Kombat movie for some odd reason. I don't understand it, but maybe have a tournament. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the next one, Rando Commando 41. I'm flying to Pensacola this weekend. Ever been? What should I do while I'm there? I don't know what people do in Florida nowadays. Unless you're going to Disney World or Universal Studios, I don't know what to do in Florida. What do you do? Go to the beach? Oh, that's sand. Here's some water. Now what? I don't know, man. I, I've never been to Pensacola. I have been to Orlando. I have been to, uh, I went to Panama City for spring break back in 1996, or 1996. Yes, I was uh, nine years old on spring break. No, I went in 2006 during high school for spring break. It was a fun time. I would say I stood, we stayed in the dirtiest hotel I've ever seen. It was just like littered with cockroaches and used condoms, uh, but it was a fun time. Uh, DJ Run 01, can you do a Christopher Walken impression as Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park? This is the only one I'm doing for this live show. You get one Christopher Walken and you get one Morgan Freeman. And here it goes. Hey, you know, there are velociraptors here in the park. You better watch out. I heard they want to eat you. You know, that's all I got. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you for that. Uh, Funny House says, hey, John, once again, coming in clutch with live shows. Thanks, man. I do my best. Uh, ever since I began watching you, I've started to collect as many 4Ks, 4K movies as possible and bought that nice OLED TV. Thanks for the great content. Well, thanks, Funny How. Thank you for that, man. I'm, I try to do my best with the live shows. I try to do them every week. I, I, I think I've only missed a few over the last year and a half of doing these. Uh, and this is the second one this week. So if you missed the previous live show from four days ago, maybe five days ago, go check that out because that is a great time as well. Just hours and hours of content. This is, this is my gift to humanity. Is it a great gift? Probably not, but it's what I have to give you. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's keep going here. <laughs> Retire the walking voice. Oh, <laughs> I I wouldn't do it unless people asked. I'll put it that way. Uh, the Freak Table says, which Scorsese movie would you like to see directed by Tarantino? That is an interesting question. If I could pick one Scorsese movie and have it redone by Tarantino, well, first of all, I'd probably say none. But if I had to pick one, uh, that's tough to say. I... I don't have one that I like that I don't like that I would want to see redone by Tarantino. I I would love to actually, you know what? If I could take a concept from a Scorsese movie and sort of have Tarantino make a similar movie, it would probably be something like maybe like the departed or maybe like taxi driver. 
just to see another version dr- done by Tarantino, I think would be interesting. Uh, Dustin Rich, thanks for the super chat. No question, but thanks, Dustin. Uh, Daniel Jones says, I asked this once a live stream laugh out loud. What's on the menu for dinner tonight? Unless you've already eaten, then what did you eat? Thank you for that. I ate a, uh, a gas station sub sandwich. It was an Italian turkey sandwich with some sun chips and a diet Dr. Pepper to wash it down. And it was utterly delicious. So thank you for the question. Uh, Legion X 420 says, John, what did you think of Boba Fett season? I, I probably um, will talk about this more in depth, but I did. <laughs> I liked it season five or episode five, six and seven. I sort of enjoyed. I just think episode seven, eh, it's it's like soon as Boba Fett returns, it gets worse. I don't know why that is. Maybe they just can't write for him. They're not writing very good like a, a very good screenplay for him. I don't know what it quite is, um, but I really enjoyed episode five and six. Seven was enjoyable. Um, I do have some issues with some of the um, supporting characters, like the the mods, the group of like emo cyberpunk kids that just show up and do random shit for the sake of being there that are utterly useless. I could just, I, I, I don't want them there. I don't think anyone wanted to see them there. They almost cheapen it. They make it feel like a CW show meets Power Rangers at some points. Um, but overall, I did enjoy the last few episodes. I think those, I think the Mandalorian saved the, the show a bit. Um, like you could almost skip over episode three and four. And at one point I almost did. And then I went back and rewatched them out of just obligatory reasons. I was like, okay, I got to watch them. Um, and I did not enjoy them, but I did enjoy the last three episodes. Uh, Will says, are you watching Batman in IMAX or Dolby Cinema? I will be watching my first viewing of the Batman in IMAX. And the reason for that is uh, those were the first tickets that were released. And you could buy early screenings for IMAX shows. Uh, so I can see the IMAX version of Batman on March 1st rather than waiting till March 4th. Uh, so I had to hop on that and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm trying to get like a press screening of the movie. Hopefully like the, the press screening is is way earlier, which would be nice because I would also go see that if I could get my hands on it. I'm trying my best to get in touch with a few of my contacts to see what the press screening is going to be and when it's going to be. Um, but I, I'm cool if I can just see it a few days early. That works for me. Uh, I I will say I probably will see it more than once if it's good. Hopefully it is. Uh, and the second viewing, maybe I'll go see it in Dolby Cinema. Uh, Michael Parton says, Producer Frank Marshall said they could be more movies after Dominion, but is it really necessary? Well, you see what happens is when a studio owns the property to a successful franchise that brings in money, there will always be more movies. It's not about the story. No, no, no. It's about money. Uh, so, yeah, I I assure you there will be more Jurassic Park movies. When? I don't know, but there will be. It's like, why would you not? Also, there could be a ton of other things that could happen. Oh, one thing I did want to mention, I was a little taken back by, uh, was in the Jurassic World Dominion trailer was, I was sort of half expecting society to be a little more post-apocalyptic at at this point in this movie. And it sort of looks like everyone's just going on with their life. Like there's people fishing. You have Owen just riding his motorcycle and stuff like that, living in a log cabin. I was sort of expecting it to look like the walking dead, but with dinosaurs in this trailer. And it didn't quite have that vibe, but maybe by the movie, it will have that. I I'm really intrigued to see how the, this movie ends. Um, I sort of just want humanity to be eaten alive and dinosaurs take back over the planet. That would be nice for some odd reason. I think that would be really interesting. I don't know. Does that sound a little bit dark and twisted? I want everyone in the movie to die and the, and the dinosaurs to win. They were here first. It's not their fault a, a, an asteroid hit Earth. So, yeah, I, I think they deserve another chance. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> uh, it's getting dark already. Uh, we got one here from Lewis Bloom. Admit it, John. As much as we all laugh at John Campion, do you watch his show every day to get a lot of your movie news? 
I do not. Uh, I know. I'm not going to say I've never. I I occasionally watch John Campia's um, clips that he puts out of some of the topics he discusses. Yeah. I, yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, which is totally okay if you do. He does a pretty good show too, even though he repeats the same thing a lot. Yeah, I think he has really good production value. I think he, I, I, I mean, I'm a little bit envious of like, he has a co-host. He's got like multiple cameras. He's got a really cool setup. I like it. Um, I just, I typically don't watch his live show. Um, I might watch some clips. All right. The next one comes from James Dozier. Hey, John. Jurassic Park is my favorite movie of all time. It's one of mine as well. I've been disappointed with the last two Jurassic World, so I don't know what to make of the new one at this point. I really hope, if for nothing else, this last Jurassic Park film is just more entertaining than the previous two. Because Jurassic World, it sort of just felt like the same thing we've seen already. Uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom did not really feel like a Jurassic Park movie to me. Uh, so at least this third one looks like something we haven't quite seen before. And if for nothing else, I'll take it. Your name here, the thumbnail and, and sweater is tight, 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 bro. Thanks for that, man. Yeah. That thumbnail, it felt needed. I actually made that 35 minutes before, uh, going live tonight. I was like, okay, I need a thumbnail. What am I going to do? I saw that. I was like, Ooh, I like the color green. Uh, and I thought it would be funny if I just put my head in the water drowning with Claire. I don't know why. I just felt needed. So thank you for that. And thank you. I love this. One of my favorite hoodies of all time. Uh, Legion X420 says, John, instead of the fly mag, instead of the fly image, if it was a moth instead in the movie, the fly. Oh, I, I, I cannot read. John, instead of the fly, imagine if it was a moth instead of in the movie, the fly. So rather than a fly, it's a moth? I mean, what would... Kind of the same thing, right? Imagine if it was like a... Rather than a moth or a fly, imagine if it was a walking stick. It'd be really lame. And Jeff Goldblum would have just turned into a giant twig. But imagine that movie. I'm going to make that one day. Uh, Mike Spoon says, Howdy there, John. What's going on? Hope all is well. It, it's going well, man. It's been a good day. Went to the gym, uh, edited a, a thing I have to post at some point this weekend and working on a few videos right now. And I did not forget. I didn't forget. I have, I have two reviews coming for you. They are being edited. I know they're late, but I don't care because there's not shit else to talk about until like Uncharted comes out in another week. But anyway, let me get back to your question. I just wanted to talk about Gladiator, as if we don't talk about it enough. But seriously, this is one of the greatest films ever to me. If I ever need motivation, I watch that film. Have a good night. Yeah, I love me some Gladiator. It's in my top 25 movies of all time. It's epic. It's fun. It's a great story. I've always loved stories about retribution and and getting vengeance. For some odd reason, I love a story like that. Um... And Gladiator is one of the ultimates. You know, you have like that and another movie about retribution is like Django Unchained, for example. Another movie I really love. And I think it's just a theme I, I like to see in my movies. So I do agree with you. Michael Parton says... Michael Parton, where'd your question go? <laughs> I really don't care about Death on the Nile. You know what, Michael... You and I both. I don't. I just don't care. I might go see it out of boredom, but then again, I'd rather just sit at home and watch a movie I've already seen eighty-seven times. Because something about Death on the Nile, and I know I haven't seen the movie. I'm just basing my thoughts, and my opinions on the trailer. But that's what I should be doing because that's the point of a trailer: is it's to form an opinion to either entice you to see the movie, or maybe not get you enticed to see the movie. But either way, something about it just—it looks like it. It looks like the way The Great Gatsby was shot with Leonardo DiCaprio. It looks so... There's like this weird flat digital look to it. It just looks like everyone's standing in front of a green screen. And I actually read a quick review of it that said... Someone said the special effects look great. I'm just like, some of the special effects in the trailer look like a, a little steamboat going down like a, like a video game stream or something. It just looked off to me. Um, I, you know, I love me a good whodunit movie. I just don't think I'd care who done it in this movie. 
I don't know. I'll pro- maybe I'll check it out. Maybe I won't. Um, if I do, I, I can promise you and almost guarantee you I will not have a review for this movie. Uh, maybe like a quick reaction coming out of the theater. But then again, I, I don't think anyone cares about it. I like who would even watch that? I don't know. Did you guys see? Are you guys going to watch Death on the Nile? If you are, let me know down below. I would, I would love to know. Uh, Airstrike. Uh, how's it going, man? Uh, do you think this is going to be a bunch of no-name army dudes hunting dinosaurs with Owen tries to protect Blue? Then a predator shows up at the very end and takes everyone out. I would hope not. Um, I'm hoping the characters actually have some kind of justification for existing in this movie. They have something to do. Um, really, honestly, like I said already, I'm just hoping that the original cast comes in and they have a majority of the runtime, which I, I know they're probably not going to do. Um, yeah. It's like, what is everyone doing in the, in these situations? How do they save all of humanity? What do they do? I don't know. It could be interesting. I'm yeah. I, but I hope Owen just isn't there riding his motorcycle. Like, all right. I really hope he gets eaten. I really do. Uh, and thanks for the question, man. Uh, Ethan, in it, you like any Brit bands, uh, like British musicians and groups? I mean, I guess the Beatles outside of that, I'm trying to think. I, I know there's like foreign bands I listen to. Uh, there's some German, there's a German metal band I listen to or used to quite a bit in the day. And it was called Rammstein. Uh, they were pretty awesome. So like an actual British band, I'm sure there is off the top of my head. I just, I can't come up with one man besides like the Beatles. Uh, James Dosher says, I find more enjoyment watching The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3 more than Jurassic World movies. Yeah, I do too. (laughs) Yeah, I I completely agree with you. Um, I would rather watch Jurassic Park 3, which says a lot, than the Jurassic World franchise. I just, at least it had like Sam Neill in it. It wasn't the best movie. It definitely felt cheap. There was a lot of issues with it, but like, Something about it just didn't feel as dull to me. So I can understand that completely. I think Lost World is underrated. It's definitely not better than the first one, but I think it's an enjoyable sequel. Uh, Ethan Innett says, I read up on a possible Terminator 7 thoughts. I've heard some other rumors about Terminator 7 and some possibilities at this point. (laughs) They have literally disappointed me so many times. Like, like they've made these promises. I remember at one point when before before Terminator Genesis was released, James Cameron was like, what did he say? He said something like, it's good or like, it's the best one since T2 or some other bullshit lies. And then I watched Terminator Genesis... And that's the day I lost all hope. <laughs> just And then Dark Fate almost got worse. You had like the one chick in it with like a Justin Bieber haircut. I don't know what was happening. I hated it. Uh, DJ Run01 says, got a good performance review yesterday. Do you have any good performance review stories? Probably not. <laughs> um, I just, I okay, here's one performance review. I remember I had a job in a cubicle at a cell phone company doing customer service. As soon as I graduated high school and I was going into college working this job and I was, I went to school all day. Then I had to go to this job at five o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. And then I'd have to stay up till like three o'clock in the morning, like doing, doing homework and studying, playing Mortal Kombat. And then I have to wake up at seven o'clock and go to school again. I remember like that was my life for like five or six months. And there were so many days I called off at this shitty customer service job. I hated it. I'd sit in a cubicle all day uh, and just work with people that had issues with their phone. Could you imagine calling a guy like me and having issues with like your, your phone and I'm, I'm here to help you. Do you think I have the answers to these questions? No, I do not. But either way, I would call off all the time. And I remember within three months of working there, I had used up every single sick day I could. You could miss like 15 days a year. And I used up all 15 days in that year in the first three months I was there. And I remember um, I had a uh, performance review or evaluation. And they're like, hey, you know, you can't miss any more days for the next nine months. 
I'm like, oh, yeah? You think I'm going to be here long enough to miss another day? And they just looked at me like I was crazy. And then I quit. <laughs> uh, and then I delivered pizzas throughout college. Uh, best job I ever had uh, besides YouTube. Carter Lovejoy says, I saw Jurassic Park 1 at my local drive-in for my 20th birthday two years ago. Well, that sounds like a good time, man. What movies are perfect for the drive-in experience? Yeah, something big and bombastic is always perfect for the drive-in experience. You know, you don't want to watch an art house thinking man's movie at the drive-in because it's it's sort of hard to pay attention to it. There's a lot of chaos and motion and crazy things happening around you. So anything with a dinosaur in it would be a fun time at the drive-in. What's another good, something like, I don't know, um, I was going to say Kong versus Godzilla, but not a very good movie. But anything like that would be a good time. Anything with like giant monsters attacking things. Something like Independence Day. Yeah, imagine watching like Independence Day during the summer season at a drive-in. That would be a fun time. Something like that. Um... I wouldn't mind watching the new Jurassic World Dominion at a drive-in. And they actually do have a drive-in scene where a T-Rex maybe eats people. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Maybe he just wants some popcorn. Uh, James Osher says, have you seen the movie The Secret of My Success? I don't think I have. I don't think I have. Haloom says... Have you ever had a girlfriend who was great, but you weren't really attracted to them? Also, I feel like you would love the song Natural Born Killer by Vin Sevenfold while working out. I used to be in a Vin Sevenfold. I, I like them. Uh, I think I have heard it. Um, and the first part of your question, no, no. I just, I wouldn't date someone I wasn't attracted to and also didn't like their personality. Yeah. Um, so no, I haven't. Uh, and thanks for the question. Hello. Uh, Matthew Lanza says nothing, but thank you, Matthew. Matthew Lanza also said nothing once again, but thank you again, Matthew. I think what's happening here is sometimes when I get a super chat that doesn't have a question beside it, you guys are doing the, uh, super chat sticker thing. Don't do the sticker thing. Do the normal super chat. Uh, Matthew, if you can type in a question over here on the normal chat, I'll try to find it so you don't have to push another super chat, man. Uh, thank you for those. But if you have normal, if you have a question, put it in the normal chat. I'll try to find it. Or if you guys can let me know what uh, Matthew's question is, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Skylar Wheelock says, thanks for recommending Better Call Saul, John. I'm on season three so far, and I'm enjoying everything about it. P.S. I was watching American Cycle before. I saw your notification. You're more important than Pat Bateman. Laugh out loud. Well, thank you for that. And if I do get a reservation at Dorcia, you're invited. Uh, thanks for that, man. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for Better Call Saul, uh, the new season. It comes out in a few months. Looking forward to it. By the way, a quick recommendation for you guys. If you do have Hulu, uh, definitely check out the uh, the series Pam and Tommy. It's surprisingly better than I thought it would be. It's, it's really fun. So check it out. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, let's go to the next one here. Uh, what Josh Coffee says, Matthew Lonza is trying out MVP cardio over here. Claudio? Cardio? I don't know what that means. Someone help me. He's trying out M MVP Claudio over here? Oh, does he want to do, does he want to outdo Claudio Rogajan? <laughs> you can never outdo Claudio Rogajan. I'll tell you that right now. He's the most dedicated viewer I have on the live shows. He's precious. We must protect him. <laughs> All right, the next one, Josh Covey says, Critic screenings of the Batman have called the film similar to Silence of the Lambs. The opening scene is drawing and ending in controversial thoughts. I've heard a lot of rumors. I've heard a lot of speculation. I'm trying to avoid them, but I've heard a lot of... A lot of very in-depth rumors. I will say that, guys, and I, I'm sort of holding back. I will not share those with you. But there's some mind-blowing shit that's supposed to happen in this movie, and I cannot wait. But, yes, um, the Silence of the Lambs uh, uh, sort of uh, reference there. Yeah, I don't—that's fine by me. 
I'm hoping it is like Silence of the Lambs meets Seven meets Zodiac and Batman just happens to be in the mix. That's what I need. That's the darkness I want and desire and crave. My only, the only thing is, did they need to make this movie rated R? Probably not, but they're better. They're better damn be a, a director's rated R cut hitting HBO Max in a few months. Because I think there easily could be from the few things I've heard. Uh, Matthew Lonza just says, hey there. Well, hey, Matthew. You never have a question, Matthew, but that's okay. Thank you for the support, man. I hope you're doing good. Uh, Mason Arnold says, watch 8mm the other day for the first time. Wow, we're just talking about every dark movie that exists, aren't we? Uh, the guy in the Gimp mask, there is a guy in a Gimp mask, uh, was a better Bane than the one from Batman and Robin. You know what? I would agree with you. I love... The- I use this all the time with my friends. I don't know why I say this, say this but the Gimp, he, his name is The Machine in 8mm, which is one of the seediest movies ever made starring Nicolas Cage, but super underrated, and I love it. Um, he has this saying, and he says, Mommy never hurt me. Daddy never hit me. I am the way I am. And it's like, wow, truer, truer words have never been said in a film. Go check out 8mm, guys, if you want to have a really weird day at home. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one, Azim, the dream reviews. Hey, John, this live stream was made for me. Well, I think it was Azim. I know you love you. I know you love some Jurassic world. I absolutely lost my mind watching dominion trailer. What was your favorite part? Also love the Jurassic park hoodie. Well, thanks for that, man. My favorite part was honestly just seeing the, um, the original cast members show back up, which I instantly knew would probably be the most heartfelt, enjoyable parts of the upcoming movie because I really don't care about the new characters. Uh, that was some of my favorite stuff. But then again, like I said, the Mosasaurus popping out of the water, that looked really fun. Um, and also the, the scene where the Mosasaurus did pop out of the water in this new trailer, didn't that look way better than the first time they did it back in Jurassic world? Just something about it just looks so much better. Maybe it was the CG. Yeah, probably, probably was the CG. Uh, Matthew Lanza, another super chat. Well, thanks, Matthew. Uh, Lucas Bernowskowitz says, uh, Better Call Saul announced its release date today. Uh, when is the release? Is it April or am I making that up? I know it's in a few months. It's a few months away. I, I don't remember the exact release date. Dude, I still have to get through Ozark. I'm only in episode two of Ozark. <laughs> like, it's just, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. Uh, James Dosher says, Thoughts on the movie Robin Hood with Russell Crowe. Was really hyped for it. A huge fan of Ridley Scott. Huge fan of Russell Crowe. Huge fan of The Gladiator like we just talked about. And I thought it was going to be like another epic adventure film. And I love the story of Robin Hood. But I was severely let down with that movie. And when it comes to live action Robin Hood films. I think Robin Hood Prince of Thieves is my favorite by far. Uh, Tim's Talk says. How much money do you think the Batman will make? I'm saying $1.3 billion at least. The new... Uh, JW uh, Jurassic World trailer was dope. Having Sam Neill back, the OG sheesh. Sheesh. Uh, yeah, man, absolutely. I think the Batman's gonna make a shit ton of money. Now the thing is, I hope. I I, I hope. Well, I don't care if they do or don't, but I, I'm sure they'll probably release it in China. And the crazy thing is, Spider-Man No Way Home actually did not get a release in China, which I think would have only helped its box office. So yeah, if the Batman's released everywhere, I think 1.3 billion is probably easy to do. Uh, I mean, it's got the most re- name recognition of any superhero out there in existence. So yeah, I, I hope it does. I, I think 1.3 billion is doable. Um, especially where we're at right now in the whole pandemic. I think things sort, have sort of lightened up and people are using common sense. At least I hope they are not everyone, but some people are. And I, I think people are going to return to theaters. And um, the only, the only detriment to that though is, a month after it does come out, it comes out in March, and then a month later it's released on HBO Max. That might hurt the box office quite a bit. I think that's going to be its its biggest like reason for hurting its box office numbers. Um, but other than that, yeah, I, I think that's I think that's a doable number. Uh, Joseph Knowles says, <laughs> "Mary Bain Kill." Uh, Calvin Candy, Jingo, Melissa McCarthy, Steve Buscemi. I will just kill Melissa McCarthy right there and then. 
I will probably marry uh, <sighs> Calvin Candy and I'll bang Steve Buscemi. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. You you, you super chatted that question. You wanted that answer. Thank you for that. Uh, Matthew Lonza, another super chat. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, put put a question in there, Matthew. Uh, but thanks, man. Beast Mode says, word on the street, there's a two-hour version of Cobra. Huh. Hmm. It took me three seconds to figure out which Cobra you were talking about. First, I was thinking of Cobra Commander. Then I was thinking of Cobra Kai. But now I just recall the 1980s film with Stallone. I could see that. And I could also see Stallone also, like, coming back with a director's cut of the movie. Um, I did hear there was a, the original version of Cobra was very different than the one, the one we actually got. I don't remember the major differences. God, I don't recall the major differences. I almost feel like it was either darker or way lighter in tone. I can't recall, though. Uh, Zine the Dream Review says, it seems like every apocalyptic movie needs a horse riding scene. Yeah, I agree. It's like, clearly Owen doesn't ride a horse. Or maybe, I, I guess he is riding a horse in the tree. I don't remember what the fuck. He, I know he's riding a motorcycle as the Velociraptor is running beside him again. Yeah, you're right. It does seem like every apocalyptic movie has a horse. Well, then again, if fuel decreases and you can't put gasoline in your car, your other alternative is either ride a horse or or walk. So I guess it kind of makes sense. I uh, love seeing Owen riding the horse. So Owen does ride the horse, yeah. Uh, in the snowy environment and John Hammond's voice in the background. Wouldn't you agree it looks visually stunning? Yeah, I agree. I, it was a nice, it looks nice. Overall, it does look nice. I'm hoping, I'm not quite sure I need to check on the aspect ratio that this film was shot in, but I'm hoping they use the full frame of everything. I don't want any black bars on the top and bottom of this film. And also the other thing is I'm sure they do have IMAX sequences in this film, but I hope they have a shit ton of them. I really feel like if ever film needed all IMAX, it was this, uh, or at least as much of it as they possibly can. I just, yeah, something like Jurassic Park, whenever you put the black bars on the top and the bottom of the screen, films like this shouldn't have that because the height is everything, especially when you have giant creatures. So uh, that's just my little weird nitpick. Uh, but yeah, and the first film didn't have that. The, the, I forget the aspect ratio that the first film was shot in, but that's what this newest movie hopefully is. Uh, Jurassic Joey says, I feel like Anton was an amazing young Kyle Reese. Uh, yeah, Anton, uh, what was it, Yelchum or whatever? Uh, yeah, he. I bought him being like a teenage Kyle Reese. And then uh, he passed away. So, yeah, I thought he was, I thought he was I, a believable young Kyle Reese. Way better than Jai Courtney was. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dustin Rich says, Back to the Future is a classic family film about a lady trying to bang her son. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you for the question, Dustin. I can't disagree with such things that were said. But I don't mind it. Next one. Uh, VCG or VCC says Alien 3 and Lost World are both very underrated movies. I have not seen Alien 3 in a long time. Lost World, I do think, is overhated. Um, just because when you compare it to the first movie, obviously not as good, but probably overall the best sequel, in my opinion. Uh, full screen over widescreen all day. Yeah. When I say full screen, I don't mean full screen, like the, uh, the original VHS movies and DVDs where the black bars are on the sides. That's not what I mean. I just, I, I forget the aspect ratio off the top of my head when it fills up everything on a widescreen. I, I forget the aspect ratio, but, uh, the next one comes from somebody here. Let's find it. Uh, Oh, uh, VCC also goes on to say, I love both uh, 
Lost World really captures the Jurassic Park movies for me, and I love Alien 3. Yeah, man, I agree. Lost World is it's a good time. I, I could watch it once every couple of years easily, and I actually bought all the uh, Jurassic Park films on 4K a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking. I need to go back and revisit them before this new movie comes out. Uh, Skateboarding versus movie says, "What do you think about Joe Rogan controversy? I think people should be allowed to say what they want to say." People should be able to listen to what they want to listen and people should make up their own opinions. Uh, I listen to Joe Rogan's podcast. I don't listen to every episode, but I listen to a lot of them. I think there's some really interesting ones and I don't think he should be held to some standard that he's a medical expert or anyone should assume he's a medical expert. Also, I think there's sort of a smear campaign going on by corporate media to almost discredit him because right now corporate media, whenever a guy who just has a podcast is getting more views, more listeners, and they give more shit about what he's saying than some corporate, I don't know, like uh, CNN or whatever, they're looking at something like that and they don't like that. The reason they don't like that is because they want you to watch their shit because they have views, views and ratings and, and a certain agenda they want to meet. And the thing is the more people that watch their shit, well, they have advertisers to appease. Don't forget, guys, the news is not some public service. It's a business. All those commercials, all those ads you see in between the news that they're saying, that's how they make money. Uh, So either way, I I, I think there's definitely a smear campaign going on. Um, Yeah. Uh, But yeah, you know, I know I know he said some stuff he probably shouldn't have in the past. But it doesn't it just seems like everyone has at this point. If you dig deep in anyone's past, I'm sure they said some weird shit. I'm sure if you dug deep enough into my past, I've said some really weird shit. But, you know, as as a wise man once said in The Lion King, the past is the past, you know? So it's about what we're doing now that matters, isn't it? All right. The next one comes from Frankie Pollock. Thanks, Frankie, for the very generous super chat. And let's dive into it, man. Been watching you for 10 years now. Well, thanks, Frankie. <laughs> uh, first time donating. Much appreciated. You are always a help for me when I'm down. A friend I've never met. My dad is actually the zero line coach for the Bengals. Hearing you mention them is awesome. Much love. Well, that's, that's really awesome, man. Can you give me some Super Bowl tickets? Um, but yeah, man, that's awesome. Um, thanks. That means a lot. You know, that's that's what I try to do on YouTube. I, I, I like to talk in my videos and have a conversation and be personable. You know, I that's what I've always tried to do. And thank you for those, those kind words, man. That's, that's always been my goal. Um, so thanks, Frankie. Thanks for that. And go Bengals. That's who I'm rooting for at the Super Bowl. Uh, Michael Barton says, uh, have you been to a 4DX theater? I wish I could. Yeah, if you actually want to see my experience of going to a 4DX theater, go watch my Birds of Prey movie review. I did a sponsorship for for 4DX, and I, that's how I saw the movie. That's the only time I've seen a 4D, 4DX movie. Um, maybe I, I saw another one. But either way, it's it's fun. If the movie's right, I wouldn't see every movie and it'd be very limited amount of films I would see in 4DX. It's kind of a gimmick. It's definitely a gimmick, but it's sort of fun. It's a it's a fun experience overall. Uh, Daniel Jones says, you ever watch Yellowstone? I've heard good things about Yellowstone. I have not watched it. It's one of those... It's one of those series on the to-do list. And by the year 2049, maybe I'll get a chance to watch it. Uh, uh, Alien 3 is great. Uh, that's David Fincher's... David Fincher. Yeah, I, I know who directed Alien 3. I just... It's been a long time since I've seen it to give you a really solid opinion on it. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to rewatching it at some point. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, Joseph Knoll says, favorite Breaking Bad character. Well, technically, I would say Saul Goodman is my overall favorite character. I mean, Jesse, I, he got annoying. I think Walter White got annoying. His wife was definitely annoying. Um, like, I liked Walter White. I did. But overall, like, he's an unlikable character. So I would say Saul Goodman was overall my favorite. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, Mike. 
Mike in the uh, the the show, uh, Mike Armantrout was another one of my favorite characters who got way more screen time and uh, character development in Better Call Saul. Uh, Josh Coffee says, "What's what's go to movie theater row seat section?" My go to at the movie theater typically never in the front section. Those are the neck breaker seats. No, thank you. Not today. Not ever. Then you have a little gap and you have some handicap seats right there. Then right behind that is the elevated section where there's always like this bar. And I sit in that row typically that way. No one's in front of me. I have this nice bar in front of me to put my legs on if if I want to. Um, Typically, that's where I like to sit. Uh, you go on to say, uh, Josh goes on to say, I always go to the last row in the middle, but last few times the projector right behind me was so loud as hell. Yeah. If you're going to, um, usually, well, it's probably the fan in the digital projector because we don't actually have actual film reels anymore, or at least maybe unless you go to an old theater. Uh, yeah, that's another reason not to set up there. Uh, also this, if you sit in the very back of the theater, I find it really less immersive, also, everyone who's annoying is in front of you at this point. So now you see every single phone in the auditorium. And also the sound towards the back of the theater, something about it doesn't sound as good to me. Maybe it's because you're so far back from the, the surround sound. I, maybe that's it. But I rarely ever sit in the back of the theater, unless it's a movie I don't care about. Uh, Potted Plant Entertainment says, uh, thoughts on the game. How do you like the ending? I've seen the game once. I thought by the end of that movie, it was the most like contrived, convoluted thing where I was like, wait, 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 wait. There's no way that would have happened. There's no way that would have worked out like that. There's no way that would have happened. Like, I think the concept is interesting. Like it could almost be like a black mirror, mirror episode or something. But by the end of it, I was like, you're shitting me, right? No way. Um, it also, it almost had sort of like a surreal film noir vibe to it at points. Not one of my favorite Fincher movies. Uh, the next one, Azim the Dream Reviews. I'm a little confused as to what is going on with the Flash and Batgirl movie. Do people not want to, do people not want Keaton to return? What's with these rumors? I'm lost. Can you explain it to me? What rumors are you referring to? Keaton is, in fact, in the Flash movie. There's probably the Batgirl shows up in the movie as well. Then she's getting her own HBO Max movie. What? I don't understand what the confusion is. That's what's happening. Now, do I like the way the the new Batgirl looks? Mm, it, It looks like her suit belongs in like a CW show. But I've only seen one image. Uh, But some of the things they're doing now, according to some of the rumors and speculation, maybe this is what you're referring to, but uh, they essentially want to get rid of Superman and have Superman replaced with Supergirl and then get rid of Batman in that universe and have her replaced with, or get rid of Batman and have him replaced with Batgirl. I I hope this isn't the case. I hope there's just sequences with these characters, but they're not actually replacing like Superman and Batman with these other characters in the Flash universe. I hope not. I I, I don't have much faith in DC, but I could see them doing this also because uh, they don't know what the fuck they're doing half the time, but I don't know. Speaking of um uh speaking of DC movies, comic book movies, I bought this the other day at uh, Mega Replay for $8. I didn't know they split up the uh, 4K of this movie on two discs. That's crazy. All right, either way. Uh, Craig Thompson says, would you rather watch Fury Road or Road Warrior? I hate that question. I love me some both. I think rewatchability, I lean towards Fury Road just because I like to look at it. Uh, but I also love the like gorilla grittiness of Road Warrior. I love me some Lord Humongous. Leave the fuel, and I will spare your lives. I hope he shows up in Jurassic World Dominion in the apocalyptic wasteland. Because if dinosaurs were on the loose, you know what I would do? I would cover myself in baby oil and wear a hockey mask. That is the only protection I need. They're going to slip right off of me. Let's keep going. But I would say I probably watch Fury Road more. But growing up, I used to watch Road Warrior quite a bit. Uh, John is my daddy. That is the greatest name ever, ever on here. Um, it's true. 
I was at Big Lots last week, and they had movies for $5. But some of them had $0.75 cents and $1.25 discount tags on them. So I discreetly switched the tags and got $30 worth of stuff for $10. And my sister seemed disappointed to me. Should I feel bad? Well, what you did was considered theft. And in some states, that's considered a felony. That's called retail fraud. And you could have been charged and convicted. And with all that said, I don't mind. I don't own stock in big lots, nor do I care. I can't say I haven't done things like that in the past. I can't say I won't do things like that in the future. But what I do whenever I get a chance is if I go to, if I buy a movie, I'll tell you what I've done. If I buy a movie and I buy that movie and it doesn't have a slip cover. And if I go back to that store weeks later and buy another movie and I see the slip cover for that movie that I already bought, I will take that slip cover Put it on the new movie I'm buying and buy that movie. That way I get the slipcover. And I stand by that. Best Buy, if you're watching or listening, I'm sorry. T600 Tiny Todd says, Have you ever actually been called a twerp? No one says that word in real life, only in the movies. You know what's funny? I just said that yesterday. (laughs) I'm not even lying to you. I was playing uh, Warzone with a couple of friends, and I called my one friend a twerp. I was like, come on, you twerp. I, I honestly said that yesterday. Weird. You put it into the universe, and it comes back. There's a lot of... Actually, I've been watching some 80s movies, and there's shit they say in 80s movies they will not say today. That's all I'm saying. But that's how people talked in the 80s. So, I don't know. Uh... Rebel Rock says, would you rather have Michael Bay or Roland Emmerich direct your biopic? For some odd reason, I think Michael Bay, for some bizarre reason, would be a good fit. Now, do I would he be my number one pick? Absolutely not. I'd probably lean towards someone like Quentin Tarantino or Martin Scorsese. But I think that would be highly interesting. <laughs> it would be like... Um, it would be like Pain and Gain meets uh, Transformers. Maybe not Transformers. I haven't had a lot of encounters with robots in my life. But, yeah. I'd probably go with Michael Bay on that one. Uh, Zane says, hey, Johnny Banana. I know you don't watch much sports, but who are you rooting for in the Super Bowl? I said the Bengals. Uh, my, my family is more of a Bengals fan. I just feel like they they deserve it. They need it. They want it. And thoughts on Tom Brady retiring? I could give a shit less. I really could. I don't care. Who cares? I don't care. He's He's got more money than he knows what to do with. Why is he playing football? I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, David F. says, Hey, John, I hope this isn't too much of a politically charged thing to say, but I haven't told anyone this, and I really want to tell someone. So you'll be the first person I'll ever tell this to. And I'll tell it to everyone watching right now. I'm pansexual. Thank you for letting me get this off my chest. Well, good for you, David. Good for you, man. That's the beauty of freedom and life. You can do whatever you want. You can love whoever you want. So congratulations. Um, The next one comes from Iron Minotaur, Minotaur. Enjoy your videos. Keep up the great work. Fun fact, I share the same birthday, not year, with Jeff Goldblum. Well, that's pretty cool, man. I am I know I have the same birthday as a few other people. I can't recall. My birthday is April 19th. I know there's a few celebrities I shared that with, but, well, good for you. Uh, 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 you are going to have uh, uh, cake and uh, uh, candles on your birthday. Uh, Charles Taft says, Hudson and Aliens made that movie better than Alien. Well, fuck, man. Uh, yeah, I loved I There's the thing about Aliens was it was more of an action movie, like a team up action movie with like these charismatic soldiers in it. Uh, the Marines. Um, I that's what I liked about it quite a bit. It was just like pure 80s fun action. It, it was almost like uh, in a weird way. It was almost like Predator, but in space in a way. Like just badasses teaming up to take down a threat. Uh, Ray Carano says Nicholas Cage, Southern accent and Con Air is funny AF. Oh yeah. He has that Louisiana accent. I love it too. 
what how what's he say? He says, uh tie a yellow ribbon around the, the oak tree because this boy's coming home. <laughs> it's good stuff. Uh Skylar Wheelock, could you rant about Roadhouse for a little bit? Love Swayze. Roadhouse is probably one of the worst films ever made, but I love it more than I should. Now, first and foremost, if I had a bar out in the middle of nowhere, I don't know how I could afford to hire some guy for $2,000 a night who's just a security guard, and he's not even good at his job. Because not, let's not forget, every night he was there, every table, every plate, every glass in the entire bar was destroyed. Do you know how, exp- how expensive chairs are and glasses are? I don't know where the money came from to support this this business, but there was something else going on here. And by the end of the film, you question everything you know about life and humanity. Uh, also, at the very end, well, I don't want to spoil anything. I think everyone needs to watch Roadhouse at least once in their life. Left booed blade. Left booed blade. I love that line. What if he calls my mama a whore? Is she? Like, it's just good stuff. It's such a, it's a testosterone, it's testosterone driven at its finest form. I will say that. That and like over the top. That's what I thought was quality cinema as a child. Welcome to the little flicksters. You guys want to be the little flicksters? I'll call you the, I'll call you the flick family, or I'll call you little flicksters. Whatever you want to be. Put the bunny back. Absolutely. All right. Robert Rock says, "Whose voice would you rather have, Grace Randolph or John Campia?" <laughs> well, I don't know. And for our first main topic, very similar when you think about it. It's like the male incarnation or the female incarnation. Are they related? Hmm. All right, let's keep going. I'd rather have Morgan Freeman's voice. Uh, Joseph Knowles has been a member for four months. Thanks, Joseph. Uh, would you want to see another 10 10 movie? I thought the first one was okay. I've watched it like once. I don't really need another 10 10 movie. So I would say I don't need one. No. There's always Barber College. That's also a great line from Roadhouse, yes. Oh, the best line from Roadhouse. Pain don't hurt. That's a line he says. Pain don't hurt. <laughs> I always wanted to make a t-shirt with that. Uh, okay. You guys are, the questions tonight are glorious. I love them. All right. Uh, uh, Rebel Rock says, uh, let's just say Jackass 5 happens and they ask you to be in it. What do you do? I say, what do you want me to shove up my ass? This toy car, this energy drink, this phone? What do you guys need? I'll do it. Oh, you want to throw me in some cactuses? Let's do it. Absolutely. All day. Take a crocodile and you can bite both my nipples. Any day of the week, I'll do it. Uh, Tennessee Toys 24 says, what's your... (laughs) What's your favorite theater experience? Infinity War, Endgame, or No Way Home? I really did enjoy No Way Home because it had been such a long time since I saw like a big epic combo movie that just made me feel like a little kid again. Um, I did enjoy watching Endgame, but the theater experience itself was not that good because the guy beside me, his breath stink, it stunk really bad. So I would say Infinity War if I had to pick those three. Uh, and the reason is I went to a press screening of Infinity War. And it was me, my friend Matt. Uh, it was Chris Stuckman. And there was only like 20 other people in this huge theater watching this movie. And it was so just enjoyable to watch. Uh, so I would say that one if I had to pick out of the, the three you gave me. Uh, Caleb... Gregory says, what are your thoughts on the movie? Nobody. I like the movie. I liked the movie. Would I go back and rewatch it anytime soon? Probably not. And I love me some like Bob Odenkirk. I I liked the concept of nobody. It just really felt like the poor man's version of John Wick meets Home Alone by the third act. Um, I, I, I was hoping I would like it more than I did. I just think there were some issues with it. Especially, like, with setting him up as this, like, ex-badass who has to go back into action. 
I thought maybe they could have done. Actually, I feel like they could have done more with it. Uh, but yeah, it's like I'd rather if I want that type of movie, I'd probably just watch John Wick again. Uh, Kenji says your top five Jackie Chan slash Jet Li movies. Have you seen IP Man? I have seen IP Man. If I had to pick my top five Jackie Chan films, I always say this is one of my favorites just because it was like one of the first Jackie Chan movies I saw, or at least in theaters, was Rumble in the Bronx, which I think is so underrated. I love that movie. Um, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like four or more that I really love. Is saying you like Shanghai Noon wrong? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Jet Li movies? <sighs> I like Jet Li. I'm just trying to think of a movie I loved with him in it. It's definitely not the one. He was in a lot of shitty straight to DVD movies. I'm trying to think of like Jet Li. He was in Mission. He was in Mission Impossible Four. Also, I forgot that existed. I can't give you five of each off the top of my head, man. But I love me some Rumble in the Bronx. Uh, Dustin Rich says, "Can you do an impression of Nick Cage as a mime?" I don't know. Uh, Azim, <laughs> Azim the Dream Review says, I thought, there, I thought they were going to hide the original trio in uh, Dominion trailer, similar to how they hid Toby and Andrew in No Way Home. I don't think that reveal is that big of a deal. I think we all knew they were coming, to be honest with you. So, um, I think they have learned from their mistakes on marketing from... FK also, what is the number one surprise you hope to see in Dominion? Fallen Kingdom. Okay, sorry. Uh, the uh, surprise I hope to see in Dominion, what do I want to see happen in Dominion? I am just genuinely curious. And I don't know if you guys are pondering the same thing. Do they drop the whole clone subplot that they introduced in Fallen Kingdom? Because I really don't need any more of that. I don't need them cloning people and maybe transforming them into dinosaurs. I hope they drop that. We don't want it. We don't need it. Unless you want to clone more Jeff Goldblums to make an entire society of Jeff Goldblums. Or maybe an army of Jeff Goldblums to combat the dinosaurs taking over all of humanity. That's the only thing I would like to see done with cloning. Besides that, nothing else. Uh, VCC says Prometheus or Covenant, uh, alien or aliens. I've always preferred aliens. I, I'm not saying it's a better movie. Had I, had I been like my age watching the first alien movie in theaters when it originally came out and having no perceived notions or, or knowledge, I think it would have blown me away. Uh, but for me, aliens is just more rewatchable in Covenant. I've watched a few times, I probably would rather rewatch Prometheus, uh, but both have big glaring issues. I wish they could have corrected and they would have been way better movies. Like the concept, a lot of the execution I enjoy, but they're just major plots and points in those movies and sections. I'm just like, if only you could have changed that, it would have been so much better. Uh, Matthew Lanza, uh, another super chat. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Kyle says, John, you are a legend. Are you hyper for ambulance? I am looking forward to Ambulance. It does look like a more enjoyable Michael Bay movie. It looks a little more streamlined and simplistic and it has Jake Gyllenhaal on it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I feel like Jake will carry the movie even though it's not great. I feel the same way. I feel the same. I feel like the trailers have showed the entire movie. I will say that. Like, it shows the opening. It shows the premise. It shows the buildup. It shows why they're doing what they're doing. It shows the middle section, which is one big chase sequence. And then it almost shows the conclusion of the movie. I feel like the trailers are like showing that entire movie. Uh, Zane says, Hey, Johnny, test. Why don't you stream Warzone? I'd love to see you smash a controller against the TV. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, so I play Warzone with my friends, and I don't think some of the things we say could legally be allowed anywhere in society. I just, <laughs> if you think shit gets dark in the live stream, you have no clue what we're saying when we, when we play Warzone together. And plus, it wouldn't be very entertaining. A lot of it's just me getting pissed off and screaming. That's really what it is. Um, at some point in life, I might stream something with Warzone, but 
I don't want to do it on Twitch, and I don't know if you guys would want to watch it here on this channel. Like, I don't know. I'm not opposed to it, though. Uh, Haloom has become a member. Thanks, Haloom. Yay. Uh, Raspy Shrimp says, have you seen Dexter? What do you think of it? I've seen a few episodes of Dexter. I just, for some odd reason, I don't get it. I can't get into it. I just, like, I get it. I just don't want to watch, like, eight seasons of that over and over again. It just, I don't know. Some, like, the concept of, like, a sociopathic serial killer who's churned good but kills the bad guys to because he has a craving and an urge to murder people and he knows how to cover up his tracks. Like, you think those are things I would love, but for some odd reason, something about Dexter just doesn't entice me to watch it. And I did watch one or two episodes, and I didn't really love them. Edward DeJesus says, uh, Hey, John, do you think they showed uh, too much of the movie in Jurassic World Dominion trailer? No, I don't think they did. I think they showed a lot of, like, epic money shots and and things. But overall, like, I don't know. I don't think they showed too much. I really don't. Now, keep in mind, this is the first trailer. We are probably going to get another one or two. So they could. I hope they don't. Uh, Max Nugenbauer, uh, and thanks for the question, man. Max Nugenbauer says, Temple of Doom is better than The Lost World. I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess. I, I mean, they're both the second movie in the franchise. I, th- I think it's subjective by this point. I like Temple of Doom. I really do. The only thing I don't like about Temple of Doom is the love interest in the movie and the first 15 minutes of the movie. But outside of that, I love it. Uh, Rebel Rock says, who do you think screams louder in bed? Oh, man, come on. (laughs) My money's on Campia. Come on. Let's keep it appropriate. Let's keep it respectable. (laughs) I'd almost disagree with that, though. Uh, David Coe says, John... Love your channel. I'm wondering if you have any pet peeves you freak you frequently see in movies or a series. For me, it's a necessary and unnatural exposition. Yeah, sometimes they have like forced expositional dialogue where it's just like they go on for five minutes explaining the plot of the movie rather than showing you the plot of the movie. Uh, that is one. Yes, I would agree with that. I, I can almost live with it every once in a while. Like depending on the type of movie it is, I can understand why they have to do that. Uh, one thing for me is it's always, they always have to do that forced character arc in every movie or for every character. Like everyone has to have this arc. Sometimes I like when the character has no arc. They just are how they are. Uh, that's one thing I like. Also, I, I've never enjoyed when they, like, it seems like in every movie there always has to be like a love interest to the main character. And sometimes I'm like, I don't, I don't need it. I think, I think it's slowing things down. I'm bogging it down. I don't need that shit. Let's just go without it. Uh, those are a few things I, I don't like. Also, another thing I don't like in some move in some movies is have you ever watched like an action film or a certain scene in a film and they just have the wrong music? Like they play some music or the score is just really either underwhelming or, or doesn't fit it. And I'm like, man, if you just would change that, it would enhance everything happening visually so much. <sighs> so, yeah, those are a few things. Zane says, hey, Johnny Bravo, name some movies you've had sex to. Uh, I don't know. Fried Green Tomatoes. Uh, <laughs> American Psycho. I don't know, man. Come on. Um, I had a really funny answer for that, but I'm not, I'm not going to say it. Uh, <laughs> Rebel Rock says, who do you think screen? Wait, did we already answer this? We already, I already answered that question. Okay. You asked it again. Uh, David says, David says, <laughs> When I saw Jackass Forever, the guy sitting in my row a few seats down from me projectile vomited into his popcorn bucket at the big part. I was dying with laughter. I would probably be dying with laughter too. That, But that something like that when you're watching Jackass Forever only enhances the movie theater experience. Like the smell of vomit in the air just is like, oh yeah, this is Jackass. So yeah, and talk about a 4D experience. 
Uh, Katie Chainsaw. Hey, how's it going, Katie Chainsaw? Uh, thanks for the super chat, but no question. Uh, but yeah, I follow you on Instagram, Katie Chainsaw. Uh, Crunch Butt Steak says, Hey, Flick. I hate these questions, but this one is necessary. <sighs> Start with the bang, marry, kill questions. Like, they just add nothing of value to this stream. Uh, but I'll answer just one more. The Sham Woe Guy. Okay. The Sham Woe Guy. Okay. Bicentennial Man. Thanks in advance. I don't know. I'd probably just bang, marry, and kill the Sham Woe Guy. Actually, I would like to be married to a uh, bicentennial man. There you go. Uh, Daniel Jones says, nothing better than frozen pizza at 2 a.m. Absolutely. And Costco frozen pizza. The cauliflower Costco frozen pizza. Trust me when I say this. You need it. You want it. Put it in your body now. Uh, Elliot Cecil says, it's going to blow if the Batman disappoints. I don't think it's going to disappoint, man. I really don't. I don't think it's going to dis- I think you're going to enjoy it. If you wanted a grounded, gritty Batman movie, you're going to get it. Uh, Judge Coffee says, member Zoom live stream. Did we set the date? We have not set the date, but it is happening. I will announce the date. Just let me figure it out. Let me figure out the date that works best first. I'll make it happen, man. Don't worry. Uh, Dr. Strange says, Hey, John, what are your thoughts on the upcoming Dr. Strange and Multiverse of Madness movie? (sighs) I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's not just cameo the movie. Like, oh, here's a cameo of this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. Oh, because you've seen this before. Let's put it into the movie. And if that's the only reason people enjoy this movie, then it had no real basis for existing. And it was just just because it had other things you like to see in previous movies. I, I hope that's not the backbone of this film. Uh, I'm hoping the overall base storyline of the film is like really interesting and you enjoy it. And it's not just like, Oh, because Spider-Man, that's why people liked the movie because he showed up for three minutes. Like that's my only concern with the movie, but I'm, I really am looking forward to it. It's coming out very soon too. That's crazy. Isn't it? Uh, Kyle says, John, I heard YouTube takes a cut of these super chats. What is the best way to support you if you want to support the channel? Yeah, they do. Um, YouTube takes 30% of the super chats, which really is awful and terrible. It's like, Google, you have enough money. I'm poor. Uh, So I would say use the uh, Streamlabs donation link under the video in the description. Uh, YouTube doesn't get their dirty, grubby, money-grubbing corporate hands all over that shit. But then again, I can't complain without YouTube. I wouldn't be here right now. So it's like sort of just what you have to do. Uh, Kenji says, favorite pizza topping? Man, I, I'm a pepperoni guy, but I also love my veggies on my pizza because it kind of like makes me feel better about who I am and what I'm doing as I eat it. Like I, I'm like, I'm eating vegetables and pepperoni and Italian sausage and crushed red peppers and 10 gallons of cheese and, and carbs. Uh, Zane says, hey, Johnny Escobar, I'm still subbed to your Flick Video Games channel. Whatever happened to it? Would you ever bring it back? I'm still un- I'm still not unsubscribing to it. And please don't ever unsubscribe to it. Yeah, um, real quick, quick backstory. I did have a video game channel where I uploaded five videos in 2013. And I was going to try to get into it. And it just felt slightly disingenuous because I really wasn't. Like, I like video games, but I'm not super into gaming. Like, there's only a few games I ever play. Uh, So to really dedicate my time to a channel about video games, I just felt like the passion wasn't quite there. But it does exist. And if you ever do get bored on a cold, rainy night, definitely go check out Flick Video Games. There's some good shit on there. There's only eight video. There's only eight videos. But I will say some of my commentary on the videos... Video game, video games I'm playing. It's cringeworthy, but slightly entertaining. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jason or Josh Mason. Why did I just do a Sean Connery impression? Josh Mason says, uh, "Tell Skydike I do give a damn." Uh, Josh Mason says, "Hey John, do you think we'll be getting a sexy shirtless Jeff Goldblum shot in the movie? If Jeff Goldblum." It doesn't take off his shirt and show me that hairy chest. I will be highly disappointed. 
as should all of you. Uh, so yeah, it would be cool. I'm just hoping there's some throwbacks to the original movies, um, and I'm sure there will be. But and I, the only the other thing I'm hoping is like they don't just. My concern with Jurassic World Dominion would be they bring back the original cast members and they don't do anything with them. Like if you're bringing them back, give them a nice subplot, a nice storyline where they have to combine forces to help save the day. And if they don't do that, it feels like such a waste. So. That's my biggest concern, really. Uh, MRIM says, pick the flick. I cannot, I'm not playing pick the flick today because to to play pick the flick, I'd have to get up to go to my movie shelf back there and I'm, I'm not wearing any pants currently. That's a lie. I am wearing pants, but I'm still wearing my little spandex leggings uh, that I wore to the gym tonight. Uh, and I just don't feel comfortable about uh, presenting that to you guys. <laughs> so I'll just keep it real with you. Um, let's see, let's see, um, uh, let's see, Kitty Chainsaw had a question, but I haven't seen the question yet, so I don't know what the question is, uh, so I don't see it yet, so anyway, uh, I'll see if it pops up here, all right, guys, I'll take a few more questions, what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna... Take, uh, do I want to take a quick break? Show us. The, okay, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going, to, I'm going to get a refill of my energy drink, a delicious, tasty, cold beverage. Thanks to all 358 of you guys watching. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm not leaving yet. Uh, during this break, get in all, all of your questions that you guys want answered. Anything and everything goes. For, I'll take a break for like one minute, and then I'll come back and answer all of those questions. Uh, so don't go anywhere. And as a wise man once said, I'll be back. And I let me find this thing here. There it is. Okay, I'll be right back. John Hernandez says, John, I never said thank you. And you'll never have to. Uh, the the Hollow Way Boy says, John, where's the music? Great question. I'll tell you where the music is. Let me tell you. First of all, let me say this. Don't ever use Epidemic Sound. I've been using them for years. I've had a subscription, which I pay for. Uh, and I do not recommend ever using that service for royalty-free music. And here's why. If you have a subscription to their service, which you pay, like, what is it, $16 a month or something like that, you can only use the subscri the subscription on the one YouTube channel you link to it. They won't allow you to link more than one channel to your subscription. So if I have two channels, well, the music I pay for can only be used on the flip pick. Even though I have, uh, have a subscription, now they want me to buy another subscription so I can use it on my second channel. Uh, because the last few live streams I've been doing, I've been using their music because I thought I could because I had a subscription. And they've been copyright claiming my live streams. Yeah, two two hour live stream, and I'm using ten seconds of music in my my waiting screen. It's complete and total utter bullshit. Don't ever use Epidemic Sound. I don't like them. I hate them. Fuck Epidemic Sound. I'm gonna stand by that right now. I think it's a terrible service. I think it's a terrible way to treat your customers. And it's just money cash grabbing bullshit. So don't I don't recommend. Don't ever use them. Fuck you, Epidemic Sound. Fuck you. All right, let's keep going here. Sorry, I just, that was a thing I've been wanting to get off my chest for the last few weeks now. I've went back and forth with their customer service. And I just, if you're paying for a subscription to use royalty-free music, 
I should be able to use that on everything I'm personally doing on YouTube. It shouldn't go by which channel the account's connected to. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. I'm sorry. I got worked up there. Let me get back. Let me get back to your questions. Please forgive me. <sighs> uh, Jayla Martin says thoughts on the Marvel Netflix shows. Uh, Marvel Netflix. I liked Daredevil. That was really the only one I enjoyed. That was really it. Uh, but yeah, don't worry, guys. I'll bring back the music on the next one. I just need to find different music from a different company. Uh, and, and I really need to cancel my subscription with them. I just takes more time to find more music than just to keep it. Uh, the next one comes from uh, Joseph Knowles. Any interest in the movie The Lost City? Um, I've oh the new uh, Channing Tatum movie with uh, Sandra Bullock, the new rom-com movie that looks like we've already seen the same movie 25 times over the course of the last two decades. Um, no, not really. No, I could give a shit less about it. Uh, I don't care. No, I don't. Will I ever watch it? I don't know. That's another question. Will I go see it at the theater? Probably not. Will I ever watch it? Maybe. Maybe if it's on like Netflix in six months or something. I agree with you, Flickpick. Well, thank you, guys. I had PSTD flashback to the Razor Mouse gate. Yeah, when I used to rant about my Razor Mouse every week. Thank God I got rid of that piece of shit. By the way, if you guys know someone who's who's a musician or musically talented that want to do a couple theme songs for me, and, it, and please... I hope they're good. Um, let me know. Send me a DM on Twitter or something. I do need a couple new theme songs uh, that are original that I can completely own the rights to. That would be nice. All right. ScarJo says, if Scarlett Johansson broke into your house and randomly pegged you and stimulated your prostate so hard you had to have an involuntary ejaculation, would Black Widow become your favorite MCU movie of all time? I mean, I don't, Captain America could do it. And I'd be like, thank you for your service, sir. <laughs> like, Whatever. Yes. Uh, Joseph Knowles says, that was the weirdest question I've ever answered. Joseph Knowles says, John, please do this. It'll be funny to react to your question and videos from 2012. They are so funny. I have thought about going back and rewatching some of my older videos and doing like a reaction uh, because there's some weird shit that has been said. Uh, maybe, maybe. Is there a specific video that you would let me want me to react to? Let me know. Uh, Haloom says, watch over the top last week for the first time was completely over the top and epic. Also, how do you avoid being tired from working out all the time? I just simply don't work out when I don't want to. That was a problem I used to have years ago. I used to go to the gym every day and over a train and I was always tired and exhausted. I never gave my muscles time to relax and I always just felt like garbage. Uh, now I go like to the gym three, four times a week. And, uh, yeah, you just got to go when you feel like it. Don't overtrain. Go for like an hour. Get in, get out. Um, that's all you need. And I find when I go to the gym and I come home, I actually have more energy because I'm like, I'm ready to go. The caffeine is like still in my, my veins. Uh, so yeah, I, now in about an hour or two, especially after this live stream, I will crash hard. Because it's, I know this sounds crazy and, and so like millennial of me to say this, but talking for two hours straight fast and trying to be quick witted and funny, but also informative or at least slightly informative, it is sort of mentally exhausted. And sometimes at the end of these live streams, I'm just like, holy shit, what happened? <laughs> where have, where am I? Uh, uh, Joseph Noel says, uh, uh, John, you scared me. Don't get angry. I'm not angry. I'm just upset. Damn 5271, John, you're awesome. But duck the system. Absolutely, man. Don't follow the rules. Don't listen to them. Uh, but damn, thank you for the question, man. Thanks for the super chat. Very generous of you, damn. Yeah, screw the system. Because it wasn't about it. No, no, no. It, it was never about the money, man. It was about us against the system, showing that the human spirit is still alive while everyone else inches down the freeway in their metal coffins. 
All right, remember that. That's the best thing anyone's ever said. Another reason to watch Point Break from 1991, also starring Patrick Swayze. Uh, hey, John, what are your thoughts on big kids? Personally, they're delicious. Uh, big kids? I don't know. I eat Sour Patch Kids, man. Is that the big version of Sour Patch Kids? I don't know. I don't like them if they are. Also, the watermelon Sour Patch Kids. I'm like, why would you buy these? Every single one tastes like a watermelon. No, thank you. All right, I'm going to answer just one or two more questions. I'm going to wrap up this live show. So here we go. We got one here from Joseph Knowles. React to the first Q&A in 2012 in the basement. Ooh, that would be interesting. I don't know if that would be like, I don't, reacting to a Q&A probably wouldn't be that interesting. I think reacting to one of my earlier flip trips would be interesting because there was one where I ran, I watched, like I came across this. It was from from like 2000 and. 10 or 11, I came across it. You know how YouTube recommends you videos or like it recommends me my old videos sometimes. I'm like, oh gosh, I forgot I, I made that. And then I watch it and I'm just sitting there in utter shock and fear. I'm like, you said that, John. You did that. That exists on the internet for everyone, everyone to watch. I could hide it. I could delete it, but I refuse to. I stand by it. <laughs> Maybe one of those would be funnier. Uh, Kenji says, speaking of ScarJo, have you seen Lost in Translation? I have once. I enjoyed it. I rewatch it once a year. My favorite ScarJo movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Uh, not one of my favorites. I'll tell you one I actually feel like watching now. Speaking of Scarlett Johansson and uh, Michael Bay in this live show, I sort of feel like rewatching The Island, which is so underrated. One of the better Michael Bay movies no one talks about. It's actually, I recommend watching it. Also, uh, starring Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, Joseph Knowles says, John, have you ever bent the rules at your job of yours and they can't tell you off because you're so good at your job? Who I've been, I've bent the rules at every job I've ever worked at. I remember one time I, w- I worked at a pizza delivery job and it was me and like four other guys and they weren't very good or very quick. Like I could take four pizzas zip around town and be back in 15 minutes because I was driving 110 miles per hour, but I got the job done and I delivered fresh hot pizza to to people. I was providing a service for the community. So I remember so many times, and this is what used to happen when I delivered pizzas. You put the car topper on that says pizza hut or Papa John's or whatever. And what happens is there's a phone number on there and anyone having a bad day. And now nowadays the terminology is called a Karen. Whenever a Karen was having a bad day, she would see me going three miles per hour over the speed limit and call in and say, your driver almost killed me and my kids. And I would always tell my manager, first of all, you can't replace me. Second of all, she says I almost killed her and her kids by going three miles per hour over the speed limit. If that's true, why is she calling a manager of Papa John's and not the police? (laughs) And he, he would just look at me like, that's a good point. All right. So... I think I answered your question. <laughs> uh, Katie Chainsaw, how's it going? Snake Plissken or RJ Mc- McGreedy, who wins in a fight? RJ McGreedy, why can I not remember who that is? I feel stupid now. Hang on. Ah, come on. Mick Greedy. Who the hell is RJ McGreedy? I why is my brain not picking up on this? Oh, god. Okay, from the thing. Yes, okay. I why could I not remember his name? Okay, um Dude, I'm going with Snake Plissken all day long. His skill sets, he's a trained soldier, an assassin. His his utilization of weapon, weapons and firearms far exceeds his his character in, in the thing, or at least in my opinion it does. I mean, it's Snake Plissken. His name alone wins. If your name's Snake, you're winning in a fight. That's all I'm saying. But thanks for the question. Speaking of Snake Plissken, and speaking of uh, Escape from New York, you know what I would like to see? A sequel to that. Now we're gonna pre- we're gonna pretend 
Like Escape from L.A. never existed. It didn't exist. I mean, maybe it did. But I would like to see a modern day sequel to Escape from New York starring Kurt Russell as an older, grizzled Snake Plissken. Now that would be a movie. That could be the best action movie easily. I, that's some, I, I would like to see that. I just The concept alone is really awesome. All right. Uh, this will be the last question of the night. Uh, we have uh, Hassani Parker. You are my favorite YouTuber when it comes to film. Well, thank you for that. You know, I, I, I don't do as many reviews as I should, but I like to think I talk about movies more than anyone else. Maybe that's not true either. But I like to think I talk about movies and answer more questions than anyone else. Relating to movies. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for that, man. I do appreciate it. Uh, the next one is... The other thing is... You know what my thing has always been? I, I want to talk... I like to talk about movies like a movie enthusiast. This is a movie lifestyle channel, okay? I'm not a, I'm not a critic. I'm a guy who likes movies. These are my opinions. Take them or leave them. But please make sure you subscribe. That way I can see you next time. All right, guys, and we got one here from Dustin Rich, Snake Plissken, or Solid Snake, or Jake the Snake Roberts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Snake Plissken once again. All right, guys, as always, thank you guys for the questions. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out and uh, just looking at my stupid face, talk about movies for a couple of hours. But I do appreciate it. I do appreciate the support and just you guys watching. Uh, if you guys could, do me a favor. Go ahead and like the video if you haven't already. Make sure you subscribe. And also, click that stupid little bell notification under the video. That way you get notified whenever we do live streams. Because I know YouTube likes to hide things. And also, I will be doing a brand new flip trip uh, early next week. That'll be a good time. Uh, we have one here. Uh, where's this fucking... Did I miss a question somehow, some way? Okay, I have I have one more question here. Amariah, which question did I miss? John, you missed Josh's super chat. I don't see a super chat from Josh on here, but please let me know what it was. And I have one more question here from Dan5271. I'm sure you're not much of a sports guy, but Rams or Bengals? We talked about this earlier. Dan, I'm going with Bengals because my family's, well, the majority of my family's from Ohio. So obviously we got to go with the Bengals. Also, they're like a really, the Bengals are a cool team. Like they just look cool. Like the Tiger Stripes. Plus, they haven't been in the Super Bowl since the 80s. I'd like to see them win it. Maybe I'll make a bet on it. I'm not quite sure. Uh, next one, flick pick, you owe me. All right, Josh, you got it, man. Uh, but I don't see the question here. Uh, yeah, I never saw your question pop up. It would have been nice if I did, but I don't see it on here. I thought I answered everything. Uh, uh, where is it? All right, let me double check. Let me see something. This will be the last question. My brain is melting. Josh Coffee, I need a flick pick Crazy Jason video. The FYE trip to the Waffle House videos were legendary. Maybe it'll happen. Flick pick, howdy, friendos. Yeah, I haven't talked to Crazy Jason in years. Not by my doing. He's just disappeared off the face of the planet. Um, I really enjoyed that flick trip video to FYE and also our rant about the Waffle House. And that's another reason I'll never eat at Waffle House. By the way, if you guys want to watch that video, type in um, the flick pick or John Flickinger and, and type in Waffle House. I have a great story that I share in that video. As always, guys, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for the questions. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good night. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.